There might not be a more cursed combination than the fast-paced and challenging action RPGs of Falcom and the micromanagement and colorful dialogue of Working Designs. While some of Working Designs' efforts still hold up today, they earned their reputation for a reason, and it's largely because of the game I'm covering today, which was voted on by my patrons, so thanks to everyone who participated in the vote. I am a bona fide Falcom fan, having played through a lot of the Trails franchise and, of course, the majority of Ease. By the way, if you missed the bump combat of the original games, this is not related to anything, but you should check out Angeline Era by the creators of Anodyne. It's bringing that bump combat back in a big way. Whether it's Xanadu or Guramin, if it's by Falcom, it's probably going to be exhilarating, up-tempo, and full of big-ass bosses. But Popful Mail might not look the same on the outside. It's got cute 90s anime designs, silly characters, and crazy villains, and a generally satirical tone to go along with the usual fantasy trappings. As male, you're on the hunt for your biggest bounty yet, the evil magician Muttonhead, who along with several others are trying to revive the Overlord and destroy the world. You later team up with the Saccharin Tat and Gaul, the cute little blue orb with Kirby eyebrows, to find four orbs that can seal the Overlord away and save the world. Let's talk about what I like first, starting with those glorious anime cutscenes. Probably the one thing I miss most about the Sega CD or TurboGrafx CD era are the pixel art cutscenes, and Popful Mail has a bunch of them with full voice acting. Very 90s voice acting, but acting all the same. I've got you now, Nutscracker! Your choice! Dead or alive, I still get the half million gold reward! <laughs> hey, you a real funny girl! You make me laugh! Hey, you like a good joke? Straight up storyboarding like a television anime, but animating with pixels is a cool and fading art, and I'd love to see more of it in games today. It's not the most fluid, but it has personality and works well against the limitations of the Genesis hardware. Likewise, the visuals are clean and crisp, with lots of love given to the animated character portraits. The environments are varied enough, though they stick somewhat stridently to each region's theme and don't vary a ton from segment to segment. To be fair, they call the regions stages, so Falcom considers these all one and the same, and there are occasional detours that break up the monotony. For example, in Stage 3, you go from a mining colony to an ancient temple, and in Stage 4, you go from a mountain pass to a pirate ship. So that's cool, I just would have liked a little more. On that note, the music is fun and combines the traditional Sega FM synths with additional sampling and drums, and it's all quite good that you only get one song per stage, and each stage could take you up to two hours to complete. It's possible they just didn't have enough room on the disc, but it's a shame there weren't more tracks. While the side view hack and slash action might make Popful look like an E spinoff, it actually got more of a Monster World vibe from the game. There's no experience points or leveling, just upgrading through gear, with some additional accessories that last a short time before expiring, like an amulet that negates all damage for and against, or snowshoes that keep you from slipping around on ice. While there are no conventional towns in the game, you'll occasionally find a village in your travels that sells gear and healing items. These items are a bit pricey, and you'll have to farm a bit of gold to kit your party out, and that's where we get to the unfortunate part of the game, those pesky Working Designs balance tweaks. For whatever reason, Working Designs would frequently mess with the balance of the games they localized in America, and often made them significantly more difficult. While the company prided themselves on being a brand for otaku, they really didn't seem to care a whole lot about the vision of the developers, and would change a ton of dialogue, jack up enemy stats, and make the game a real nightmare for casual players. Was this to discourage rentals? It seems weird to make a game frustrating for everyone just to keep renters from beating an 8-hour game, and I feel like disc rentals weren't much of a thing until the PlayStation launched. But whatever the case, Popful Mail is by far the most egregious of the famous working design treatments. Just look at some of these damage increases courtesy of the cutting room floor. One of these is a random enemy in stage 4, what the hell? This extends to the bosses, who also have massive stat boosts, and there's little you can do to mitigate damage, even with the best armor you can buy. And the camera doesn't help, it doesn't move until your character is two-thirds of the way across the screen, which feels backwards to me. That leaves you with so little reaction time to deal with enemies, and if you ever back up to create distance, the enemy might get cropped out and then you have to close that distance again just to get the enemy back into frame. I don't think I've ever experienced as many game-overs in a single playthrough as I have with this game. 
Luckily, you can save your game anywhere, and I save my game every time I changed rooms. It's kinda hard to believe doing that with a platformer, you'd think it was like a King's Quest game or something. Since healing items and armor are so expensive, you'll end up having to go back and forth farming enemies. And you'll need those healing items because bosses can hit you in two or three hits, and these fuckers can zip around and fire all sorts of nasty projectiles at you. In the end, finding a safe position and cheesing them ends up being the best strategy every time. The localization fits with the comedic vibe, but it does often feel like intention is overruled for the purpose of adding a joke or reference. I actually like how they hammed up Venuncio's character, a typical vain foppish man who leads Mail into multiple traps, but his character and voice acting are so over the top that his noble sacrifice later seems kind of blunted. One villain's character portraits look quite cold and menacing, but I don't really feel the menace when his dialogue is an Arnold Schwarzenegger parody. Listen to me now and fear me pretty soon. I am no kindergarten cop. I am the predator and you are my play. This little skirmish will be your last action, hero person. It's Judgment Day. And look, the game's a comedy, so fine, yuck it up. But it does date the game considerably. Despite these aspects, Popful Male does have a ton of charm and very memorable characters. Male is a brash, selfish adventurer, and it's always a treat to see her squabble with villains and the extremely irritating Slick. Come on, win one for the Slickster. Why, you little... Ugh. Do you know what you did this time? You're a disaster factory! Gaw is somewhere in between Meowth or a talking slime from Dragon Quest. Cute, but determined. Once I get the last orb, you'll be history, floaty pants! And who doesn't love a mechanical toy man named Nuts Cracker? I'm gonna talk to you no more. I'm gonna make you run back to your mom and cry. <laughs> The rooms are nice and big without being overwhelming, just large enough to encourage some exploration without pulling you in a dozen directions. While your starting sword doesn't have tremendous reach, you do gain ranged and magical options over time, though they drain mana and have to recharge over time. For the most part, the hack and slashing is fun and on par with its contemporaries, which is what makes the difficulty tweaks so annoying, because this could be a great game without those changes, and instead you kinda have to fight through it to love it. Now, if you're not averse to ROM shenanigans, there are fan patches to restore the original prices of items and statistics of enemies, and that is obviously the way to go, but I do wonder if going from one to the other might be too jarring of a change and the game will become too simple. In the end, Popful Mail is one of those games that I'm glad I played, but I'm also glad I finished, because I probably won't go back to it. If you're a god-tier gamer, or you're not afraid of saves coming, it might be worth diving into the American version just to experience the weird localization, though be aware there are some 90s slurs that snuck in there. Otherwise, find a patch and fix the balancing. Or maybe watch a Let's Play? Hell, just watch the cutscenes, there's plenty of entertainment there. Now it's time for you simpletons to suck the sour wine of my discontent. I ain't sucking nothing. Well then hold on, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, now stop it. Uh, oh, I don't mean it. If you'd like to have a say in what game I play at the end of October, join the Patreon where I'll be running a poll, and even free members can vote. Otherwise, be sure to like and subscribe because in October, I'll be reviewing all of UFO 50 and playing a ton of NextFest demos, and I'll have plenty of recommendations for you. Until then, you'll find me in another castle.